All right, guys, we're going to go into disassociative amnesia. Now, disassociative amnesia um, means that we're forgetting different events, usually traumatic events that have happened to your patients. So traumatic events, uh, it can be anything from actually getting injured or being involved, like let's say in an explosion or a car accident, and then moments after you're like, I don't know what happened, I just like blacked out. Um, so we're going to explain that just a little bit. Here we go. So it's defined as memory loss. Now there's four different types, small, medium, large, extra large, okay? So localized mean that there's a short time, hours after the event. Let's say you got in a car accident and you don't remember a few hours after the event being rushed to the hospital, being, I don't know, cut open, operated on, I don't know. You do not remember these things. You don't recall these things. Now you can be fully wide awake, but not recalling this uh, because your body is using it as a defense mechanism to protect yourself. Or you can just hit your head so hard that your head just, you pass out, or you're in this subconscious state, okay? So selective, you guys can use the S because it's only some events. So some events are remembered, some events are not remembered. And this really holds up well in court when you're like, hey, do you remember doing this? No, that was a traumatic event. I don't remember that part. I do remember this part. So people have used that before. Uh, but this is a real disassociative amnesia is a real condition. Okay, so generalized, generalized, you have a lifetime of not recalling the certain events that have passed from that traumatic event. Now, this is very rare condition, but, but generalized amnesia is something that you would see on uh, 50 First Dates with Adam Sandler and Drew Barrymore. If you guys have ever seen that movie, she forgets her entire lifetime every single morning she wakes up. So that would be a generalized type of um, condition. Now, continuous, this is our extra large problem. It's almost like um, Nemo, when Finding Nemo, not Nemo, but Dora from Finding Nemo, the little blue fish, that's like, just keep swimming, 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 just keep swimming, that one. She has this continuous memory loss. Now, she, you can say something to her, and then she'll forget in the next three minutes. So those kinds of memory loss where your patient's almost like a goldfish. Goldfish cannot retain, I think, a memory of, I think it's a few seconds. So you can give them a little bowl, but they'll still get lost in that little bowl because they don't know that they're um, inside of a bowl because they forgot 10 seconds ago. So that's continuous, it's very continuous. Now again, when I said, when we're taking data from your patient, usually there'll be a history of an injury to the brain, traumatic injury. Now it can come from childhood when we see the most severe cases, or it can come from a traumatic event, an explosion, a car accident, a plane crash, and your patient survives. Those are outside of injury kind of induced. Well, it still can be induced by an injury, but traumatic event. Just remember that word, trauma, okay? And the last one is genetics. It can be passed on from a bad trait. But, I mean, usually what we see most cases is traumatic events. So we want to do a mental status assessment. So we use the acronym AMP. So when you're looking for your patient's mental status, usually we do AO times four, you know, alert and orientated, we ask them four questions. This doesn't really help with those patients because they already have memory loss. We cannot ask them four questions because they really don't remember. So we use an acronym called AMP, and AMP means appearance, mood, oops, appearance, mood, memory, 
and perception. And I'm still in this from my book that we have for you guys at Simple Nursing. This is your psychiatric quick notes. So make sure to download that. Has everything you need here. So AMP is um, the mental status because remember your patients have memory loss. So we want to look at their appearance. We want to look at their mood. Um, we want to check their memory. They know where they're at. Obviously, your continuous forgetful patients don't want to ask them, hey, um, when's your birthday or when, what were you doing, you know, I don't know, yesterday or the day before? Because it really just depends on the severity. So, we use this to test their status. Actions. What do we do for actions? We are ruling out organic causes. So, this means that we are ruling out um, possible genetic errors or something that's inducing your patient to this. And guys, like I said, most of the time, it's caused by a traumatic injury or a traumatic event. So usually as nurses, we are going to give uh, patient education. We're going to provide a um, means for more data gathering. So this means that we are putting your patient in support groups, like a survival support group or war veterans support group. People who have been through the same types of incidences that your patient had. So they can talk about it, express their feelings. This is a creative, um, sorry, we're going to create a milieu environment where you have the same types of people communicating. Very relaxed environment. And again and again and again, I'm going to keep on preaching it because it's going to keep on coming up. This will be on your test. I don't know where, but it will show up. What do you do? What do you tell your patient? We tell them to express feelings, express themselves, talk about the event, talk about how they're feeling, talk about how uh, this has changed their life, talk about how they are overcoming it or gathering data. And that's honestly one of the biggest things uh, that we do as psychiatric nurses. Now, all of us don't want to become psychiatric nurses, but this is what we do for gathering data. That's how we answer psychiatric questions. Totally different than answering pharmacology or med surge questions, even pediatrics. So that's really your go-to. Gathering, gathering, gathering information from your patient. Never telling them how to feel, never telling them what to do, well, not what to do, but never telling them and forcing them, okay? always gathering information, gathering feelings, telling them to express themselves, those kind of things. Okay, let's go on into our next video. You can get your life back and stop those all night study sessions. Featuring our new pre-lecture videos and follow along study guides that highlight the book for you. You can study anywhere at your own pace with our PC, tablet, and mobile software. Join thousands of successful students already using SimpleNursing.com and get to your goals faster, less stress, and more success. Get started today. Join now at SimpleNursing.com.